Hey everybody, we are going to be talking about the books that were available to, for you to read this year in the Volunteer State Book Award Intermediate Division. This will be a quick reminder for those of you who read quite a few of them or if you only read just the few that we had and there will be a link in the description of this video and you can go and vote for the one book that you would like to nominate for the Volunteer State Book Award. This is something that is totally up to just students in the state of Tennessee. Your teacher, me, Dr. Weiss, nobody except you gets to vote for these books. Wish Tree by Katherine Applegate. Most of you guys should recognize this book. Almost all of you got a free copy at the beginning of the year. Unfortunately, we ran out so that we couldn't give them to all of the new students that we got. But it's one of the books that I like a lot on this list. And it tells the story of a community coming together. But it's all told from the perspective of a tree. Tumble in Blue by Cassie Beasley. Uh, Tumble Wilson and Blue Montgomery set out to fix their ancestors' mistake and change the bad luck that has followed them all around. And kind of a fantastical tale. Army Brats. This is one I wasn't so crazy about. Maybe you liked it more. About three kids who are living on an army base and trying to solve a mystery uh, with all of these weird cages and dogs that are going missing. Insignificant events in the life of a cactus. If you don't recognize this, you haven't been paying attention, and I'm a little worried about you. Avon was born without arms, and she moves to Stagecoach Pass in Arizona and befriends Connor, a classmate who has Tourette's, and then they set off to solve a mystery and learn how to start to exist even though people stare and make fun of them. The War I Finally Won. This is another book that I like a lot because it's a sequel to a book that I really love called The War That Saved My Life. And in this one, Ada is learning to exist after she has had surgery to fix her foot and also during the World as World War II is, is sort of ramping up. The Perfect Score by Rob Bouillet. This is told from six different characters' points of view, so it's a really good example of how a story can be told from different ways and how they're trying to figure out how to do well on their state tests. And just as a fun little side note, Rob Bouye and I have the same birthday, September 12th. Her Right Foot by Dave Eggers. This one was a really cool story that I enjoyed about learning the importance of the Statue of Liberty and why it's so important that she seems to be in mid-stride. This is not a werewolf story. This also was not one of my favorites, but if you like fantastical stories, maybe you enjoyed this one a lot more about a boy who may or may not be a wolf. Ban This Book by Alan Gratz. This one's really, really great. About a girl whose favorite book gets banned from the library, and she sort of sets up a banned book library in her locker at school and trying to take a stand against the censorship in the library that's happening. Real Friends was the graphic novel selection from this year, and it's a graphic memoir of Shannon Hale and learning how to make friends and be true to yourself at the same time. The Trail. This is a book that went missing for a little while, but that's okay because we got it back. And it is about a boy who runs away from home to hike part of the Appalachian Trail after his friend dies and he befriends a dog along the way. And for those of you who are still thinking about reading this, the dog does not die. I feel like it's very important that you know that. Ollie's Odyssey is an illustrated chapter book that kind of looks like Toy Story. Ollie is this little creature right here and he gets taken. And he has to find a way to get back to his human while his human is trying to find him. 
Hello Universe by Erin and Trotta Kelly. We talked about this book a little bit because it did win the Newbery last year and it is also told from different perspectives. Amina's voice is the story of a Pakistani American girl who is Muslim and she loves to sing but only in her in the privacy of her room. She doesn't want anybody else to know about it. But then she learns that sometimes you have to be brave, especially after bad things happen, and you have to find the good in those bad things. Pablo and Bertie is about a young boy and his bird who are both orphans. They washed up on Isla as babies, and they're trying to find some way that their life is going to go forward from here. The Secret of Goldenrod, the only thing I talked about was this was kind of a haunted house story. It's a little creepy and a little long, but it's it's pretty good. Two Truths and a Lie was one of our nonfiction options, and it is exactly what it says, Two Truths and a Lie. It's got some really cool stories in there, but it's also really good about learning how to double check your sources, and you learn some really neat things. Framed a Toast Mystery. This one is the beginning of a series about Florian Bates, who becomes a consulting detective for the FBI, or he already is. I can't remember which one. And he and his new friend, Margaret, are helping to solve an art heist in the United States. Beauty and the Beak. This was one that we also read together. Uh, the true story of a bald eagle and how three, a 3D printed beak was able to rescue her from needing attention all of the time. It was a really neat story. Some of you guys were really affected by this. You asked me really wonderful questions. Clayton Bird Goes Underground. I think this is the last one. Um, about a young boy who loves to play the blues with his grandfather, but his grandfather passes away, and so he runs away to try and join other blues players that he knew with his grandfather, and he learns a little bit more about how to be yourself and how music can really save some people. Yeah, so that was the last one. I hope that at least one of these you enjoyed enough to vote for, if you need a reminder of some of the books that we read, almost all of these you can get from the public library. And the last 15-ish chapters of Insignificant Events in the Life of a Cactus are still up on the YouTube channel. They'll be up there for a little while longer. The votes aren't due until May 8th. I hope you will turn them in before then. Like I said, there will be a link that goes along with this video that you can click on. And I'll also have my Google Forms link or you can always email me. I would love to hear your opinions and why you picked the book that you picked. I'll talk to you guys soon, I hope. Bye.